Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Brony from Cambrotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and this is SNG207, Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. So what we have over here, if you have been following along, this is our structure and this has been put together like the chapters of a book. So currently we are on chapter 17 where we are looking at functions or Python functions. Now, this is the second part of the video. In the first part, we looked at some of the things we needed to know. And in this particular video, we are going to look at arguments or non-keyword arguments and keyword arguments. So this is going to be an interesting thing. So remember we did our addition function and over there we were passing X and Y. And we declare Z is equal to X plus Y. And we returned inside of a formatted string we had something like this so sum is equal to z all right so everything is looking good and if we decide to call this function and pass in some values let's say three and two and of course because we are returning now we need to wrap everything up in a print function so that we can see it on our terminal so when i save this and run this we do get five over here because that's essentially this now, what if we want to add in a couple more numbers over here? Now, currently, when I do this and run this, we get an error. It says, type error. The addition function takes two positional arguments, but four were given. So, it was expecting two, but then four arguments were given. And this error makes sense. Now, the truth about the matter is, we may not, of course, we can actually go back and, for instance, change this to seven. I mean, adding more parameters over here and let's say do a key over here and i can now do plus z and a plus a key over here but i need to be very careful because we are using z over here so let's do um let's see a and let me do a over here so everything is looking good now when i run this we don't get any problem because because everything over here is giving us the 12 we expect to see over here but then there's a problem we may not we cannot go into the minds of our users to know the exact numbers or quantity of numbers they are going to put up over here it could be 10 it could be 20 and we cannot come in back here to be changing our code that's going to be a complete waste of our time and that's where we use the non-keyword arguments we represent over here as ax so now let me show you and let's rewrite this code in a better way so if i'm to do a dev and once again do the addition function over here and i'm going to pass in for instance x and first of all let me print out x and before i continue because this is a non-keyword argument we have to prefix this with a star. If you remember some of the things we did in the past when we were using the multiple assignment operator and we we're doing some unpacking, there were some few things that came up and it is similar to what we have over here. So now I can actually print and to show you exactly what is happening, let's also print the data type of X. So now let's call the addition function and now if i pass in one two three four five six seven eight nine it could be as many as i want when i run this we don't get any problem over here and that's simply because all the elements or all the numbers we pass inside of this function which is the argument we put together in a variable called x which is the non-keyword argument and as you can see we are unpacking everything from here into this and now when you print this out it gives this out and as you can see the data type over here is a tuple so this is similar to what we did for instance x comma y and this is going to be equal to if we have let's say one two three four five clearly there's a disproportion over here but remember if we were to do for instance a star over here then in this case x is going to be assigned to the value one over here and y 
it's going to be assigned to the rest of everything we have over here one two, i mean three i mean two three four inside of a list in that case that was a list in this case this is a tuple so you can see that this is a tuple and now let me just print this out so if i'm to print out y and i'm also to print out the data type of y let me comment this one out so that it doesn't print if i run this because we are printing out you can see that we have we are printing out y from this point okay so you can see that we have two three four five and that's what has been bundled over here and this is a list but in this case in this present case we have this as a tuple let me uncomment this and run this we have this as a tuple bundled over here and the data type is a tuple it is a tuple but just even we looking at it you can see that there's a parenthesis that's wrapping up around this so this is looking good now you can use any variable name of your choice but in most programming books you normally see programmers do the acts this way so that you don't confuse a lot of people who will be working on your code later on or maybe somebody who will be reviewing your code so now when we do this a lot of people will understand and obviously we need to do acts over here and acts over here as well so currently when we run this we don't have any problem over here good so now we want to get the addition and in order to get the addition remember when we we're dealing with lists there was an example i showed where we had some elements in a list we use the for loop to do an iteration and we're adding things up over there and that's the same principle we are going to use over here because this is indeed um, a tuple and a tuple is i trouble we can i treat through a tuple so what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to declare a variable called total and total is going to be equal to zero now this total i'm defining it within the function as you can see now i'm going to use a for loop over here so i'm going to say for and i'm going to say for numbers in the acts that i have over here and if i decide to print out sorry if i decide to print out these numbers which i'm going to show up over here if i decide to print out these numbers when i run this we do get that i mean the numbers i've listed out over here showing up in here so now what i want to do is to do a total plus equal to the number so at every iteration point this total will be updated and i explain that when we're dealing with list it's the same principle we are using over here so over here i can actually return or in order to make this a little bit simple let me just print out total so i can now print out total over here so now when i save this and run this code i do get 45 over here. you can actually do a check on this and we are good to go so let me put this out inside of a formatted string so i'm going to do this and i'm going to say sum is equal to what i have over here so when i run this we do get this and it could be as many or as less of numbers as we have and we get 10 over here i can do a 20 definitely this should give us 30 and as you can see the code is still running so this is what we refer to as the non-keyword argument we use the star to prefix whichever thing we pass in here and then we can use it because this is going to return a tuple and we can do an iteration and do some of the interesting things we would want to do so everything is looking good now let's look at the keyword argument which is then going to be the quarks that's what you see over here so now let me just have some space over here and let's work so once again let's have this and let's call this my function and inside of my function i would have to use double star and any variable name i want but like i said we need to make our code more readable to a lot of people so we use quarks over here and first of all let's print out quarks and also let's print out the data type of quarks and in order to see this work i need to call my function and if i don't pass anything over here 
first of all if i leave this like this and run this you are going to get an error it says my function missing one required positional argument quacks and that's because it is actually missing it we didn't pass anything over here so if you are to pass something like ken over here now this ken will be saved in here we can print out ken it can print out the data type of ken and that's exactly what we see over here good now if we are to do this and now do this double star i'll save this and now when i run this we do get an empty dictionary over here and this is of a class dict so when we use the axe the data type it returns is a tuple when we use the keyword argument the data type it returns is a dictionary so now since we have a dictionary over here we can look at how we put out keywords okay now if i'm to do for instance brony over here i'm passing in brony if i run this we get a problem it says my function takes zero positional argument but one was given but then we're supposed to having a dictionary at the end of the day remember what dictionaries are dictionaries are key value pairs so we need to provide the key and the value and this is where the word keyword argument comes in so there's a key and there's a word and in the context of a dictionary we know that the key is a key and the word over here is a value all right so now what i can do is i can say name is now equal to brony now when i do name is equal to brony and run this clearly we get our dictionary printed out over here because now we have provided a key and its corresponding value so clearly you can see that this is our key and this is our value i can do a comma and also provide a new keyword argument and i'm going to say h is equal to 20. so i'll save this and now when i run this we have updated our list over here and we are saying that name brony age 20. now we've already dealt with dictionary so we definitely have a proper understanding of what is happening over here good so now we can do some interesting things over here so now let me clear what we have in here and this is what i want to do i want to do an iteration and print out for instance the names and the keys and use some of the things that we already know so for instance i can actually do something like this i want to print out and i can do quacks dots and when i do quacks dots for instance get what do i want to get i want to get the name so now when i do this and run this we do get brony showing up over here this is looking good but now i would want to also do something interesting over here and i want to loop through this so i'm going to say for for keys comma values in and i'm going to say quacks because i want to loop through the keys and the values but then there's a method over here which we call the items method and this items method is going to print out everything for us so this is going to return um originally this will return a tuple and because we are using two variables over here it is going to return that key value pair so if i'm to let me just come back in here if i'm to use a print statement over here and of course use a formatted string bring my f over here and do something like keys equal to and i'll bring another formatted string over here and i'll say values so i have values over here good so now when i run this we do expect to see something like name is equal to brony and age is equal to 20 over here based on the logic we have put out over here so now this is looking good now one of the last things i would want to mention is we can actually mix things up over here and when i say mix things up please be very careful when you are working with some of these things so you can actually have and let me put it out in a comment you can actually have your normal positional argument so you can have your x your y and any other thing that you want then you can also have your non-keyword argument which is going to be your ax which is going to return a tuple and everything in there then you can also have your 
e-word argument, which is going to be your quacks, all in one function. You are at liberty to do this, but please pay attention to the order in which they should appear. First, your positional argument comes in here, then followed by your non-keyword argument, and finally, your keyword argument. So over here, I can do something like, I'll bring in a star, and I'll do ax this way, and I'll do a comma. This is allowed, as we have it over here. This is allowed. And if I am putting it out, or I'm trying to bring this argument in here, I need to also bring it first as the order appears over here. So over here, I can say University of Ghana. So I'll put this up in a strange and I'll say University of Ghana this way. So now when I save this and run this, we don't seem to have any problem over here. Python understands. Now let's try printing this out. So I want to print out my ax. And if I'm to print out the data type of my ax, we definitely know what to expect. So I'll print out my data type of the ax, which is certainly going to be a tuple. So now when I run this, we do get University of Ghana showing up over here, and there's a tuple. And we're also looping through our keyword argument and also printing out name is equal to Bruni and age is equal to 20. Good. Now, if I'm to, let me just get sorry let me just get rid of this data type because we already know this now we can also add in positional argument so for instance i can say x and i'll put up a comma over here now because this is a positional argument this by all means should i mean be listed over here but then in the case of non-keyword argument i can choose not to bring anything away and it's still going to work it's just going to return an empty tuple for me and that's what you see over here but in the case of a positional argument if i'm to do x over here save this and run this without bringing x it tells me that i'm missing one required positional argument so therefore i need to bring in a required positional argument over here so for instance if i am to do let's say ghana this way If I'm to do Ghana, save this and run this. We have this tuple, which is empty. The default works over here. So the default is like that. If you don't have anything passing here, then this is going to be assigned over here. Then we also would want to bring out something for our ax. So I'm going to bring back University of Ghana. And I'll need to bring in a comma over here. So now when I run this, I do get University of Ghana as my non-keyword argument over here. Then finally, let me just print out my X, which in this case is going to be my positional keyword argument. So now when I run this, yes, I get University of Ghana. I get Ghana. I get these values from my keyword argument over here. So this is just an introduction to functions. And as we move along, we are going to build interesting things using functions and we are going to package some of these things and also deploy as we move along. So this is going to be the end of this video. Now, if you are finding value in the content I'm providing over here, then kindly support my work by subscribing to the Cambridge Tech channel. Also, don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime I release a video, you'll be duly notified. Share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at Cambridge Tech. We say learn programming. You can do it. Bye-bye and catch you in the next video.